I love streaming and not screaming when I am stream. Hello and welcome to the stream. Twitch now tells me I am live. I realize I may have been live a few seconds ago as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so earlier we were talking about uh, this question that I asked on Mathematica that has not gotten any good answers so far, but it actually raises another interesting question in general. If you have a bunch of variables, um, what sort of other variables, well, you know, a bunch, of, a bunch of numbers, what other numbers can you get from them? Uh, so for example, um, here we have a bunch of relations that we, we came up with earlier, um, you know, from the previous stream that are true of an ellipse, and lots, lots of good stuff here. So the, the one question we could ask, um, so instead of looking them all at once like we were trying to do, let's look at just rels one briefly, the first element of this. Um, and that's that, that's not very deep or anything. But the question is, let's say, um, can we solve this equation for A? And the answer is yes, very simply, in fact. So what this tells us, though, is if we have F, X, and Y, we can get to A, okay? Can we do a little bit more than that? Can we get to F if we have the other three? And the answer there is yes. Again, it's a plus or a minus, but that's not a huge deal. The point is, if we have A, X, and Y, we can get to F. Okay, so we might as well ask, what if we have A, F, and Y, can we get to X? I, yes, we can. And can we get to Y with the other three? I think the answer here is yes also. Ooh, that is really ugly, but it is nonetheless true. Um, so the idea here is, from any of these four variables, uh, we can get to any, uh, you know, from any three of these variables, we can get to the fourth. Uh, these variables have um, what's known, you know, the, th these variables are dependent on each other. Y you're given three, you can get the fourth. Not surprising because that's how we define the relationship. Now there's another uh, sort of uh, issue here, and I'm going to go ahead and make this, um, where's I'm going to put it? Not an astro. I think this one just is going to go pure Mathematica. Um, and we will call this text mode. So, so what I'm getting at here is, um, so let, let's just go ahead and write this down here. Um, so for this explicit problem here, we had the set uh, A, F, X, and Y. Uh, I don't think we had B in there, did we? I don't think we did. Let me actually go ahead and print rels one to make sure. I don't think we ended up relating uh, B to this one. Um, yes, we have F, X, a and Y. So uh, we have F, X, A, Y. And what we're, what we're trying to say in some sense is if you have F, X, and A, you can get Y. This is not going to be our final notation. If you have uh, F, A, and Y, you can get X. If you have F, I'm, I'm trying to see what all of these are. We have F and X, Y you can get A. And if you have X, A, and Y, you can get F. I'm pretty sure, right? We did, we did do all of these, right? Um, so basically, if you have any three of them, you can get the fourth, is wh what we're saying here. And we need a better way of saying that. But, um, but there's, also another, there's also a couple of other things we have which we sort of don't notice. If we have uh, F and X, F, ooh, F, X, and A, we can also get F. Uh, and we can also get X and A. I mean, that's just because we're given them. But it might become important if we're going to create a graph of all these things um, to, to have all these have all these dependencies sort of known. Um, and then the question is, can we create a really huge graph of all of this and, and have it, you know, maybe even compute the transitive closure and just basically see then what we can get from what? And that is sort of a dream that I had, uh, not, not that kind of dream, um, a goal that I had uh, to see if we could do that with functions so we know that what pieces of data are sufficient to provide what other pieces of data. And that would be the transitive closure. Um, so Mathematica does let us create graphs from edges. So let's just, uh, for the moment, we can say, um, 
And this is just to demonstrate that we can we can do this. I'm not sure we want to really be using this as our final sort of notation, but um, and and this is not again complete. There's actually much more that we could do, but but again, just as a test, uh, we should be able to do this. And Mathematica dis should display a very nice graph for us if we do this. And again, by Mathematica, of course, I mean the Wolfram language. So let's go and put a semicolon there. And I haven't figured out how to get labels or anything out of this graph, but that's... I mean, we do want to do that, but let's, let's just see if we can get this. So this is sort of our hideously ugly-looking graph right now. Um, but it's not nearly ugly enough. Um, I definitely want to see if we can, get, we can get labels on here. And then we, we actually need to be a little bit, we need to be better. Because it, in, there's other things here that we have, like F A Y gives us F A and Y. So that's three more dependencies that we have. Uh, this could get very ugly very quickly. Um, and that's one reason I want to look at it and see how ugly it gets. Um, and at some point, we might not even care about the, 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 the visual representation of the graph, but rather, what can you get to from where? Given what pieces of information, given what subsets of all our variables, can you get other subsets of all of our variables? That is technically the, uh, the goal here. And, and then the next step would be, of course, now that we know how we, now that we know it's possible to get from one set of variables to another, what's the formula that gets us there? Which could be much worse, but again, that's, that's, sort, of a, uh, that's sort of a later thing to do. So uh, if I'm very lucky, the graph function here, when I do this, should give me, well, I guess I can click on it. Give me some information on the graph function. And I'm hoping for something like labels equals true. Uh, I'm not sure this is the best way to actually do these, but let's just see. Today, this is the first Pomodoro, so we are skipping it. The second one we will not skip. Um, detail. And I think I'm gonna just go ahead and take this page to a new, p I can't do that, can I? Let me try that one more time. Let's see if we can do this in a new, t whoa, that's not what I meant to do. Control, oh, come on. Graph with edges, graph with properties defined by the symbolic wrappers. Uh, I guess we'll, whoa. I was hoping we could just do... Oh, we can't really do that, can we? we, we it doesn't seem to work. Alrighty, so details and options. I think I don't like this. So I think we're going to go over here and just go to wolfram.com slash... I, I, this probably won't work either, but it might get me close to what I want. Jesus Christ. Um, graph. And by the way, uh, we're not using the word graph in, as in diagram. This is graph as in digraph or directed graph. Okay, so what we're trying to do here, we're trying to find a way to put some labels into it. Um, annotation, button, labeled, display, the element with labeling. Mm. Vertex labels. I'm hoping there's just like a true. Let's see if we can just do vertex labels to true. Let's see if that's the sort of magic sauce that we need here. So something tells me that's not going to work just from the way it. Ta da! That's actually pretty cool. That's what I meant to do. But that is pretty cool. So maybe vertex labels, we, we could actually give them some actual labels that are not the word true. Um, none automatic, um, I guess vertex labeled automatic seems like a good thing to do. All right, so this is actually pretty good. This is giving us what we want, which is, you know, given these subsets, we get these possible variables. This is again, not complete. Uh, we need to go a little bit deeper into this. Um, but, but this is a good start here. Um, uh, let's see. I could probably do edge labels to automatic, but I'm not sure there are any, uh, edges aren't really named right now. 
Um, so let's try this. And I realize I just misspelled that, but that's okay. Let's we'll fix that. Okay, so the edge labels are just going to be basically the labels uh, of the two vertices that the edges connect. So I think we will leave that off for right now. Uh, the vertex lab labels automatic is pretty good. Okay, so now... So now... Let's find a way, a better way than having to list them all out to get the uh, the list of of um, of edges from a given set. So the first thing we want to kind of do here, and this is where I'm going to need to kind of futz around with Mathematica a little bit, because um, I don't know the exact. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is, if we have a set, we want to look at all the subsets, and for each of those subsets claim that each of the members um, is reachable from, of the subset is reachable from, well, we'll, we'll take a look here. Okay. So here we're just going to do something very simple. We're going to do subsets of A, B, C, D. There's going to be 16 of them. Um, and we're going to call this, we're going to copy this back into our Emacs here in just a second. Um, let's see. Okay, so there's this is good. We've got subsets. Then a second thing I want to do here is I want to say, um, given a list, which is a subset, um, imps, implies, I don't want to, I can use implies, of S. Now, this is going to be careful here. I want to say, basically, that every member of, uh, if S is a set, every member in the set is implied by the set. In other words, I want to say S implies S1, S implies S2, so on and so forth. Um, I guess technically S implies every subset of... Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. Ev actually, it implies every subset of S as well. Um, whew, that's ugly. Including itself, technically, and the empty set, technically. We might be able to get rid of the empty set and the set itself because they're not very useful. Um, but yeah, the implication here is going to be for a given set. Oh, I can't quite do this. This is what I want to do. I can't quite do this um, because uh, this mathematical will let you define list functions uh, unless the thing you give it is actually a list, not a placeholder for a list. Unless you do this, which is delayed evaluate. So what I want here is to say that S implies i, where i goes through subsets of s. So this is this is already looking really bad. Um, so I guess we go ahead and look at Im implies of a, b, and c real quick, just to see what happens. And hopefully we'll get the right thing here. Yep, it implies, yep, it certainly implies that, certainly implies that, that, those, that, and these. And it implies itself, too. So what we actually want now um, so if we want all the implications of a set S, uh, and its subsets, okay, so this is not going to be quite correct for that. We're going to want a table of... Jesus freaking Christ. It's going to be T implies I, where I is the subsets of T, and T is the subsets of S. So to see how this works, and this this already looking like a very, very bad idea. So now we'll just do implies of ABC. This should give us all possible implications trivial implications of A, B, and C. Oh! Um, implies S set equal to table, T goes to I, where I is... Nope, 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 that doesn't make sense. I is a member of... Um, no, that, that's fine. And T is a member of subsets of S. So we should be able to get that there. Um, I subsets T. And do I... I may have to do flip this because... Um, 
Yes, because I think T subsets I, S, S has to be an actual set before I can do um, I subsets T, I think. I think that should work. Actually, I'm not sure if it will or won't. There it is. Every subset of T implies its own subsets. Um, hideously, hideously ugly. Uh, and that's not even really the real, that's not even a real, these are trivial implications, all of these are. And I think I'm going to need to flatten this by one level, because I'm pretty sure that right now, um, I'm going to look at the dimensions of this, but I get the feeling it's a two-dimensional array. We just want it to be a list. Um, I don't know how well edge the graph would handle... Oh, That's nice. Hmm. That doesn't even sound right, though. I am suspicious. It should be like, oh, you know what, it's 8, but the inner dimensions are not going to be the, uh, the correct length. So, it, so this is implies ABC, nice and... Now let's look at the third element of this, and I think we'll see the problem. Yeah, the third element has two sub-elements in it. So what we want to do... we be really careful about this. We don't want to flatten... Do I want to flatten the whole thing? Maybe I do. Um, that might actually be okay. So let's see what the length of this flattening is. Um, and keep in mind, this is with only three elements. This is this is a nightmare waiting to happen. Twenty-seven. Now, with four elements, you would suspect it's going to be sixty-four. 81. Yeah, so let's see with 2. So is it going to be 3 to the power of how many there are? That doesn't sound right, but you never know with math. So if I have 5 elements... Yeah, apparently it's going to be 3 to the number of elements that we have. This could get very, very big very, very quickly. Um, so I think I can actually fix that by just putting the flatten in here since we're not actually doing anything. Um, and then I don't need this one extra flatten, and let's see what this says. Okay, cool. Now, this is where it gets ugly. Let's see if we can make a graph of these, um, what appear to be uh, 243 edges. Can't fault it, this is probably correct. It's not very useful, but it is probably correct. Let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. And by little, I mean a freaking hell of a lot bigger. This is... This is not going to be particularly useful. Um... Wow. Can I bring this out into something? I mean, this, this is going to have to be... Okay, we can get rid of this. Uh, this is going to have to be huge for us to see anything really useful out of it. And maybe not even then. Um, let's go ahead and make it down to four. We we're, we're, we're still have a lot of... Okay, it's a little bit better. And if we stretch it out enough, we might be able to see... An, um, still kind of ugly. Um, and I guess this is not going to help at all. Yeah. So this was a, a good idea that uh, kind of blew up in my face. Yeah, that is... The only sort of advantage is this graph has, you know, we can do like a transitive closure on it. We can do a lot of other stuff on it here um, without necessarily having to look at it. So I think if I just do A, B, C, easy as one, two, three. I think this graph will at least be, excuse me, somewhat uh, visible, somewhat understandable. And let's go ahead and take a look here. Yeah. So this says if you have ABC, you can get to AB, you can get to C, you get to a bunch of stuff. 
Um, if you have the empty graph, you can't really get to anything but the empty graph itself. I'm tempted to get rid of these loops because it is fairly obvious that you can get to a graph to itself. I don't think that adds anything. Um, it's also not immediately clear to me that if... Um, uh, if we're going to see, the problem here is you can, for example, you can get from A to B to A to B and A to B get to A, but you can also get directly from A, B, C to A. Where is that arrow? Oh. Wait. Is that? Oh, wow. Okay. Because so I would think from A, B, C, you could get directly to A. That's not a problem. It is a subset of A. Um, and yet... Oh, here it is. Here it is. A, B, C, all the way to A. Um, however, that's sort of redundant because you can also go through A, B to get to A. So the next question is, well, the first thing we're going to do here is, before we forget, is to, is to copy this definition of implies, which is uh, very important. And we're going to copy it into our little code here. And I'm going to go ahead and B, C, get this because this is, this is pretty close to what we actually want. And let's go ahead and do a checkpoint save here. I know you can't see what I'm doing. That's okay. All right. Um, so the next thing is, I guess, the opposite of a transitive closure. We kind of want to keep these lines minimal. I don't think we necessarily need to go um, this far with it. We don't necessarily need to connect A, B, C to A, B, A, B to A, and then have also A, B, C connect directly back to A. That is probably unnecessary. So to avoid that, I think we can just say that each, um, for each case, we're going to connect not to all of the subsets, but the subsets that are of, um, let's see, um, of one, of length one less than the, all the immediate subsets, the, the subsets that are this element minus one element. Um, still very ugly, but I think we can do that with the subsets command. I think subsets has a, a way of saying, only show me the subsets of a given length. Um, uh, yep, at most elements, exactly n elements. Uh, so this is, um, uh, so I think we can now change this. Now that we've got it saved nice and safely, I want subsets of exactly length t minus 1, and to make it exactly, we have to do, I want the subsets, okay, wait, do I want subsets of, no, this is in the wrong place, sorry. Um, this is just the subsets of S. So T is going to go through all the subsets of S, but I is going to go through the subsets of T that are of length T minus 1 exactly. Let's see how this does, probably is not going to go much better we might have a, a mathematical sequence in the making here. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, whoa, 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 uh, I think I know what's wrong, but, um, okay. Uh, hopefully this will go ahead and spit it something out despite all of this. It will not. Okay. All right. Getting tough here. Okay. We could keep tweak. The problem here is length t minus one uh, could be a negative number, um, and to avoid that, we want to say I g we could say you know the max of this and zero. I don't think that's helpful. I mean that'll get rid of the error, but I think that's now we're just going into solving a problem by you know creating more problems. I don't think this is going to compile. Yep. Uh, max of 0, length t minus 1, um, and the max, and the list, and the subsets, and this, and the table. Nope, still not there. And what else do we do need to end? Oh, and the table, and the flatten. That looks so damn cool, I just want to keep it. With the exception of, that looks freaking cool. Can I rotate it? No. 
That is that is awesome. I mean, I wasn't even going for cool looking, um, and I'm sure neither is Mathematica. That just you know, since you can't print the graph graph plainly, it doesn't really matter. But this is nice. So here we say from ABC we can go to the three immediate subsets. From these three we can go to the three immediate subsets, which are A, B, and C. Uh, and then from there we can go to the only C is the only set that's sort of below all that. So now, Mr. Smartass, let's go ahead and go for four variables and see how it looks. Because that was so. This is actually pretty nice. We can actually sort of look at this now. And this is this, by the way, this structure here is called a lattice, where you start with the you know the whole set immediate subsets, more immediate subsets, more immediate subsets, and so on. But the, the nice thing about this is this is a lot smaller than what we had before, um, and it looks a lot it looks a lot cleaner. So I think we can even go up as high as uh, five variables. It's getting a little bit ugly. It's getting a little bit ugly, but um, if we spread it out a bit, it's still a pretty nice looking, it's not very balanced, but it's still a pretty nice looking uh, lattice here. And I do want to see what the length is of this. It's nowhere near 3 to the 5th power. Uh, 3 to the 4th power. Interesting. So I wonder if that means we, all we've done is we've reduced one level of power. Because uh, we've reduced one level of edges. Okay. But this is much, much better. Um, so this one we do want. This is the... We're probably not going to call it implies. Come on, behave. And we'll just copy that. Right now we're not going to do much more than just, you know, trivial copying. Now why does that... Okay, I, I don't even need that one anymore. Alright, so but we've got to be careful here. These, uh, these are... I think we want to give this, we want to call this the lattice of S. And this is important enough, we'll call it a formula. But so far, we haven't actually done anything useful. We've just given the most basic and obvious subsets of S, which are namely the, its, its own subsets, the impl implications. All right, real Pomodoro back in two and two. And we are back. So now our next interest here uh, is going to be in situations where three of the variables imply the fourth. If you have any three or four variables, you can get the fourth. So here we can go ahead and erase this since we have it. And let's go ahead and erase this as well since we don't need it. And let's erase this because it looks ugly. So in this case, we're going to start with the file uh, with the uh, set ABCD, 
And what we know here is that any three of these can give the fourth. So I think what we want to do here is called a partition of S, and I think we can force it to be three and one. Um, um, Uh, I don't think this is actually going to work, but let's try this. 3, 1. So we're basically looking for three elements. Depth 2 requested an object with four dimensions. Woo. Um, with offset D. Still don't think this is still not going to do what we want. Yeah. So... Okay. Mm. <laughs> mm. So I think we actually have to go a little bit deeper into this. So four one says show me partitions of length four, which is probably not very exciting because there's only one of them. Um. So, I guess we could say, show me all subsets of length 1. Yeah, hang on, of length 3, rather. Of length 3, and we know what those are. These are just these a whole bunch of suckers. Um, no, sorry, subsets of exactly length 3. Okay. And then... <laughs> For each of these, show me the missing element, sort of the, the set difference. But I'm not sure if I want to really do that. Um, I think we can get away with just using partition. Uh, let's see if we can. Um, So this form here uses no padding. Um, this might be worth looking at. Let's go ahead and go over here and look at partition. If it's not the right one, then one of the other functions that's very similar to partition might do what we want. And if not, we do have the, the you know, the ugly workaround of just using the difference function. Okay. So, ta -ta -ta -ta. But look at some details and examples. Uh, some may okay. Um, that's interesting. That seems to be right up our alley. Allowing the final. So let's that that looks like it might be it. So we might want partition S up to. Three, three. Um. Okay, so I apparently did something wrong with the up two. Um. Oh, up two is camel cased. Okay. That is good. It's not the only such partition, though. Can I... Is partitions pluralizable? I don't think it is. Yeah, it is not. So partition will just give me the one partition of the list. Maybe this is what I... Maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing now that I think about it. Um, because I think this actually takes... Just does one sort of break. Um... Let's see what I'm really looking for here. Flatten, reshape, multi-column, take, take, drop, rotate left, split, split by, gather by, groupings maybe is what I want. Um, groupings of 4, 2. Oh my god. Um, this is not what I want. Um... 
tuples, maybe? Um, all possible n tuples. Okay, no, again, this is that's more like a, a multiplication that repeats elements. Permu we could use permutations, actually. That would work. Um, um, actually, I'm not sure that would be a good idea, because we don't really need the permutations, because BAC comma D for us is the same as ABC comma D for us. In fact, we probably do not want to treat lists as being, um, or we don't want to treat them as being ordered lists, we want to treat them as sets. So I think what we're looking for is subsets, that is probably where we're going to go with this. We just need an option to subsets that says something um, a little bit nicer maybe? Um, okay. So generalizations and extensions is what we're going to look at in just a sec. Subsequences. I don't think that's correct. We need we need some form of a partition partitioning here. Um, um, applications. We, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think this is a way of of partitioning. Well, wait, 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 wait. We think we can use partition with subsets. Maybe that's what I meant to do in the first place. So partition. So now what we want is not, um, right. So we still want subsets of S. Stand by. Subset of S. And then on one of those, we could say, for example, partition. Uh, no, we don't want subsets of S. We... Yeah. Because that's not... If we, there's only one subset of S that has length 4. We just want to... We don't even want permutations, really. We want... Yeah, we want elements of... Okay, so what we want is all the subsets of length 3. And then from there, we want the set difference... I think it's just we actually have to say set new difference. Uh, union. Okay, so there's union. Diff I thought there was a difference. Is there a subtract? Okay, we need to look at subsets here and say for basically what we want is. I wonder, hang on one sec, can I do this? Minus ACD? Yeah, unfortunately it's not gonna, it's not gonna do, um, maybe we'll remove work? There's some, there is some, oh, what does remove do? That looks kinda cool. No, that's not what we want. We want to remove as subsets. I'm still not convinced this is the best way to do it. I think what we can do is basically say, um, for each of the th three element subsets of ABCD, partition it so that we have th those three elements here followed by the missing element. However, let's look at some set functions. That's the set meaning set equal to lists as sets. So, okay, I think what I'm looking for is the complement of the set. So let's see if we can do that. Complement of ABCD with ACD. That might be have this backwards. Um, okay. So what we could do is we could have we could have a set. Um, wait, 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 wait. Yes, 
we could have the whole set complement off each of its subsets. Um, so we could get a table of I followed by the complement Jesus Christ um, uh, I'm going to call this rest determine one and it's something you can apply to any set and you do have to do it as a delayed because uh, Mathematica won't let you not do it that way um, okay, and then we'll say that basically, uh, we're going to take I from the subsets of S of length S minus 1. So all the subsets that are one shorter. And what we're going to do is we're going to create um, the set I complement S I for that. And then my, okay, let's see. Where I goes from uh, and I, oh, 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 this is, oops, sorry. That needs to be closed off there. Okay. Let's see if it even lets me, well, it shouldn't have a problem with me defining, oh, has no closing thingamabob, does it? Um, no, hang on. Something's more wrong than this. Table I complement S I, where I goes to the subsets of S of length S minus 1. No, okay, so there's just that. Okay. Subsets of S that are of length S minus 1. That ends subsets. That ends this. That ends table. That's what I meant to do. Now, clearly, that hasn't actually done anything yet. Um, and I probably meant to put a... Um, this thing here, and I probably don't even need those braces anymore. Okay? I don't know why I did that, because it's, it's only defining a function. It's not going to actually interpret anything. Rest determine 1 of A, B, C, D. So we should see all possible combinations of three of them determining the other. Uh, beautiful, 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 beautiful. This is exactly what we want. You give me any three of those, I will give you the fourth. Uh, we can obviously try it with five elements, but I'm pretty confident that this is going to go well. Um, yeah, looks good. And then, of course, we can always do a, you know, a graph because these are edges, and see what this looks like. Not looking too great. Um, let's go to go ahead and uh, vertex labels to automatic. Do that. Um, okay, so I guess this actually does tell us what we want to know. I mean, this is this is correct. We need to add in some other stuff, but this is certainly a valid function get this in here and we're not going to actually do anything with it yet um, and here we should actually say um, not implies vest Th these these are the very basic ones these should be called um, uh, not subsets um, I guess direct is what I was going to call them Rest determine one, I think I'm going to just keep it named that. It's a pretty good name for it. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and BC Gitify this real quick. Okay. I'm vaguely curious to see if Mathex can handle this. Um... And if it doesn't, it'll just add to my disappointment, which is also valuable. So let's see if I can find these two functions here. Oops, these two functions here. And okay, so give me the direct subset, the direct subset implications 
of ABC. Uh -huh. Oh, is it just called a subset? Oh, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe subset doesn't exist in this world, and I accidentally created it. So, let's see here. Sub. Set. Okay, okay, hang on. Okay, not very useful. Cool. I, I don't know what the hell that does. Okay. Another suckiness for, for um, math. Um... For Mathix. Okay, so now let's go back to our formula for the, just the very first of our formulas for the um, for the ellipse. Um, and I guess I, I guess we don't have it defined as rels anymore, so we kind of have to do that this way, which is okay, I think. Come on, get rid of this. Get rid of this. I don't need it. Get rid of this. And I guess I could just do reset calculation, although that doesn't actually work, so it's not very helpful. Alright, so we have this. Um, we'll call it eq1 equals this semicolon. And the only thing we need to check here is that we can actually solve it for any um, any of the variables. X, Y, F, and A are the things that are involved here. And this this worries me. This, uh, this expression actually worries me. It is so freaking bizarre. Um, I, I, it probably simplifies, but anyway. That's not what we're interested in right now. F and A. So this does follow the criteria that given any three of these, you can get to the fourth one. Okay, Pomodoro back in two and two. Excuse me. And we are back. Kind of. Okay, we're back. Okay, so this does meet the criteria. And so what we want now here is um, we want for our four variables x, y, f, and a, we obviously want the direct. And we also want the rest determine one for f x a y put a little space between our commas the only problem here is I think this is going to be a list of lists I don't think this is going to be what we want it to be but let's go ahead and put these functions in here and then create this little monstrosity, which we are going to print out. And it decided it's going to start a new line there for us. And we don't want that, so we'll get rid of this. 
And I think we'll need to merge this and this. I don't know why it does that. Well, because it hates me, but aside from that. Okay, so now show me this list here. Hmm. Direct? Okay, hang on. Let's turn one. Ooh. Okay, sassy. Let's just see if we can get this one going. Um... I'm pretty sure this is a lattice, but let's go ahead and graph it real quick to make sure. Okay, good. That's our vertex. That's our, um... That is our lattice, rather. And now I also want here um, rest determine one of f, x, a, y. And I think this is going to choke. Because I have a nested list. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. Let's call this S1. And we will just see if we can flatten this list out. And we should just have a list of um, we should just have a list of a whole bunch of these suckers now. 37 sounds about right. Uh, the problem with if it was two, that would mean we still have our list nested. So now this is where the money shot is. I that has a different meaning to some people. I know. Automatic. All right, so this is this goes. We're we're in. It's ugly, but let's see what this looks. I think we can make if we make this bigger, it will be less ugly. Um, okay, so what we have here. F X and Y. You can get to any of these. If you have any of these, you can get to X A Y. You should be able to get to. Um, F. There it is. Um, there is a temptation here to not show the the obvious, the direct connections, and just look at the connections that are um, sort of non-obvious. But I don't. That'll just be like these three connecting to three other points. So I'm not sure that's useful. This is a this is a quasi useful graph because it does tell us what you can get to from where. Um, okay, and this is all from the first relation in the, um, the relations that we know about in ellipse. So if this is, if you know the focal, well, if you know all four things, it's not interesting. Um, but if you know, like, f and x, you can get to x or f, but if you know, uh, am I... There should be something called a transitive unclosure. I wonder if we can do that, if we can make this graph minimal in the sense of um, getting rid of uh, getting rid of any case where you have A goes to B, B goes to C, and yet A goes to C directly also. Uh, and I think, I don't know if what the hell that's called, but let's find out. Mathematica opposite of transitive closure. Ooh. Um. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Finds the, the transitive closure of G, the supergraph of G that contains the edge X, Y, if and only if there's a path from X to Y. Okay, so this is the, this is the negative of what we want to do. Um, transitive reduction. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. So now this is an ugly looking graph here. Now if we can find the transitive reduction. Um, something tells me this is not going to do what I want. Well actually it might. 
Uh, transit, that didn't do what I wanted. So this is transitive reduction. What am I... Okay. I might be doing it on the wrong thing. Okay, so from blah 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 blah. Transitive reduction. Well, it looks like it is a transitive... Aha! So we've got to be a little bit careful here. So this is... Um, let's call this G1. Um, and then, then I think we can do this, maybe. Okay, transitive reduction. Uh, maybe you're spelling it wrong, but it, apparently you need to now that it, you're doing magic with it, you need to do this. Wow. Okay. Um... I mean that 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 should be a graph there. Um, okay, let's go ahead and let's be nice. Let's go ahead and do gra g1 equals the graph. I mean, oh, maybe the vertex labeling was a bad idea. So now, show me the head of g1. It should be a graph. Yes. Okay. Good. So now I should be able to say g2 equals transitive Ooh, what is this oh this is something that maybe doesn't like anymore so maybe I have to say this now okay so now apparently we have to say transitive reduction graph in this newer version instead of just transitive reduction uh, which I apparently invented so g1 and then just show me whoa 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 and then just show me g2 um Okay, um, that does not look too, that actually might be transitively reduced. Okay, and since I was using the wrong for text labels, to automatic, uh-oh, something tells me that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, that worked, okay. And so since now we, we kind of figured out what we were doing wrong here, um, we can say graph of S1 of vertex labels 2. I don't know why it's not giving me the um, the, the autocomplete anymore. Okay, so we have this. Let's go ahead and do this one again. This is the one we, this is the ugly one. Okay. And then let's see if we can do a transitive reduction graph of graph and just get what we want out of this. Well, it didn't give us an error message. That's good. And let's see if it really... Well, I don't know if we can really check fully if it's... Now, oh, come on. If it's transitively reduced, but let's see what it looks like here. It's a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit cleaner, I think. We have lost the loop around this, which is good. Um, so, and now uh, the transitive closure of this would be every possible connection. And I don't think we need that. Okay. So I am liking this. Um, I'm liking this in the sense that it, it has some vague degree of interest um, to me. Uh, and it suggests, you know, what you could get from what. All right, but let's go. That was just from the very first, um, from the very first equation in res. So we're going to say S1. I'm going to do this flatten. So these are the these are the um, implications we get out of just the first uh, the first res item. Let's go ahead and look at the first second res item. And again, I think this time we can delete the whole thing, can't we? And there should be a evaluation restart session. Yes, it, it it lies about this. It's still gonna. The only thing it does is show me the Wolfman again. I don't like you, Mr. Wolfram. Um. Okay, so this is our equation. And. Um. So now the question is, can we solve it for a? And I'm almost sure we can. That's not, that's not, that wasn't very hard. So we have here A, B, and F. 
Can we solve it for B? We probably can. Again, there's, there's two solutions, but we don't really care. Can we solve it for F? Yes, we can. So we have A, B, and F. Those are the three variables. And we have the same properties here. So this is going to be S2 equals flatten direct. Uh, by the way, some of these are going to be redundant. Direct A, B, F. And rest to determine one of A, B, F. Okay. Direct ABF, rest determine one of ABF. Nope. Direct ABF close uh, close this. Okay. Close this, close that. Okay. And now <laughs> um we can flatten this, graph this with um, is it transitive reduction graph of this, comma vertex labels to automatic. So this this mofo goes down. We're pretty happy. Um, I'm going to pretend like this actually works. And it doesn't. See, it just it doesn't even doesn't even try to work. Piece of crap. Okay. So we want this and this. These are sort of our canonical functions that we want. Uh, we do not want these to be separate. We want these to be merged. I get the feeling that maybe I'm just using this whole thing wrong. Maybe I'll attend one of those damn webinars one day. Um, so then we have this. And if this works, this will be pretty fucking cool, I think. Um, and I guess I need to shift enter here. Um... Go ahead and zoom the sucker out. Um, now the only thing I see no these are all these are all these are all just single B's. A B implies A. Um, at some point the question the question I want to ask is you know if I have the um, central area and I want to get the focal area what other information do I need? Um, and there may not be, I don't know if this is going to answer our question or not, but this is looking pretty damn cool right now. Um, so this is, if you have X, A, Y, you can, okay, 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 that's good, that's good. A, B, and F. Um, the only thing I want to be careful about is we don't have A, B, and F listed twice or anything. Um, And really here we could just be saying um, F, X, A, Y, and B, because that's the other thing that we have here. So let's see if we can do that. Um, and if we do that, we don't need the direct of A, B, and F, because we already have it sort of covered by this one. Um, but let's see what this does. This should make our graph a little bit cooler because we'll have like a, it'll be more lattice-like. Um, so we do need to get rid of these three suckers. And we need to replace them. Or we just need to do keep doing this forever. With these three suckers. Okay, dun -dun. Stick over here. Keep it all in one. Shift return. Okay, we probably at some point need to see if there's a way to increase the size without having, and, and I'm sure there is, without having to do this. Well, the technically graphs are not images to begin with, so in some, s oh my god. Oh, shoot. Okay, so now we have the problem of, of ordering. 
because here it says ABF and here we have FAB which is exactly the same thing but um, it doesn't recognize that because uh, it thinks ABF and FAB are they're separate as lists they're not separate as files uh, as subsets so we can fix this um, okay so we can say sort of I which is fine Graph rest determine one. Is that a space there? Ooh, I don't want that space there. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, that was kind of stupid. Uh, direct is going to be table of sort T. I is just one element, so I don't think we need to sort it. it is going to be a table of... Uh, oh, actually, I'm sorry. It is going to... We are going to need sort I. Um... And this will be, this is the one where we don't need, because uh, complement SI is going to be basic, well, we might as well put it in there, but, whoa. Uh, but that's not going to be an important, because that actually is, um, it's only one element and doesn't need to be sorted. Okay, so now we're going to only give these in sorted order. Now, there's sort of a question, how do you sort variables, but there, you can, you can do that, so don't worry. So now we need to replace this crap with this crap. Okay. Wow, I'm surprised it's keeping up with all this shit. Okay. Oh, that looks a lot better. I, I mean, I'm going to double check, obviously, but I think I don't see any of that sort of... Uh, yeah, so here we see all the four the five that are the four, and then the, the three ones, and there's no F. All of these are in alphabetical order, which is nice, X, Y, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is the transitive reduction of the graph, of the things that you can get from um, other things in here. So there's going to be an other issue here that we don't want to address quite yet. If you can get, S1 can get you T1, and S2 can get you T2, S1 union S2 can get you T1 union T2. I don't think we account for that situation here. Um, you, maybe we... No, I don't think we do. We might want to do that as well. Okay, from Pomodoro time, back in 2 and 2.
and we are back. Excuse me. Okay, let's go ahead and see what we can do with uh, some of the other REL properties that we know. Some of the other relations we know are true for an ellipse. And I guess this one would be... Um, I'm not even going to bother to solve this one because it's fairly easy to see what this does. Uh, for one thing, this gives us... So, let's see. So I think I'm going to move this up to here. S0 is going to just be the one that is going to be direct of all our variables. F, X, A, Y, B, Ang Pak is the latest one. We actually have a whole list somewhere else, but for right now. And then we could just say, um, then we could make these much easier. We don't have to worry about the big sort of, uh, the big sort of subset inclusion stuff for all of this. Okay. Okay. Alrighty, and this one basically just says that uh, um, any two of these will determine the other, and that's fairly obvious that we can we can get that. I'm not even going to bother to. Uh, I'm not even going to bother to um, to solve that because it's fairly obvious that y is equal to x times that, x is equal to um, you know y over that or y times the cotangent, and of course, ang poc is just the arctangent of that. So, and at some point I might turn this whole thing into a big list so I don't have to keep adding like this over here. But let's take a look now to see what it looks like. And I realize this is just, the, 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 the aesthetics of it are not great, but I don't necessarily want the aesthetics. That is not necessarily what I'm looking for. I'm ultimately looking to see what this, what this graph can do for us in terms of functional determinicity. I say that five times fast. Okay. Okay, slight worries here. Where is my big, huge... Oh, dear. So now have I finally broken it? Um... Did I forget to include S0? Let's see, S0 equals... That should be fairly convincing. That should be a, like... Unless I somehow made it... Oh, shit. Okay, it's still a lattice, but I've just sort of made it lose its lattice-like form now. It's gotten confused and has some big files, bigger stuff down here. And I'm wondering if that's not... I mean, this is... Huh. I was not expecting that. Okay. interesting so at the very least this will tell us it won't give us the formulas but it'll tell us what you can get from what so one thing we could ask a question of you know how could we get ang poc what are the things that will um lead us to ang poc uh and i guess for that we'd actually need the transitive closure not the reduction we the reduction is nice for looking at it though uh, can I move these? I probably can't. This is just an image, right? I can't move these nodes around. Okay. So, so at some point we're going to actually look at the properties of this graph, not just the sort of a pretty print of the graph. Um, okay. Um, so actually, actually, um, now one thing I forget about Mathematica is if you can create an empty list and then start assigning, um, 
start assigning uh, elements of it that are not the empty elements. Uh, and let me explain that here real quick by just doing it. Or by failing to do it. So let's say we say s is an empty list. And then I say s3 equals foo. And then print out s. And I should get null, null, null. Ooh, can't do that. Um, okay. Now what I could do... Mm -hmm. I could make S like 100 copies of the empty set, and then... <laughs> I mean, that is, that is really bad, though. Um, so if I did this... Empty set. 100 copies of the empty set. Did this, I'm going to get... Yep, there it is. It is not a very good solution, though. So I think I'm not going to... I'm going to avoid it for right now. Um, you can definitely do like s of 0, like a function, and then basically say s is equal to si for i equals 1 to 100, blah, 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 which I might end up doing. Um, yeah, and I think if you do this, you can even use something like down values of, of s. Let's try that real quick. So... If I say s of 0 equals 1, s of 1 equals also 1, s of 2 equals also 1, s of 3 equals also 1. And then say down values of s, I should get, ooh. See, so unset s, but that's only because we're not, we're not um, No, I think I want the down values, all of them, please. And this is very simple. So, whoa. Down values. Not exactly what I wanted, but that is that is essentially what I was looking for. Um, it just does show that 0, 1, 2, 3 are defined. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Um... And that's just to make my life easier here when I can say s is equal to si, i goes from 0 to 3, for right now. And then I can flatten that, and then I can just pass this on into graph of s, vertex labels automatic, transitive reduction. Okay, let's see how it that. And I cannot forget the two things I've defined up here. I maybe need to keep them a little bit separate at some point. Okay? So I want those as one freaking thing. Merge, merge like the wind. Okay. And then do this. Which for some reason should not give me I don't know why, why it gives me multiple cells on the first one, not the second one. But anyway. Oh, that's not good. Something is quite wrong. Oh, because I printed this, which I didn't want to print. My bad. This tag... Um, yes. I think in Mathematica you cannot use the same variable like this. I can't do this. I need to say this is set. And we'll just say graph of set here. And we will update our little thingamajabi here. Because S is already being... In Perl you can get away with crap like that. But here you cannot. Um, because s, to s as the function it is the same as... Okay. That's not cool. Um, and I think this is because it's... A graph object is expected. Okay. 
I think the problem here is we need to clear S because even though it said we've reset our computation, we haven't. All right, there we go. Looking good. I mean, to the extent that good is a word here. <laughs> to the extent this is not super ugly. It's, uh, it is ugly. I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Um... And so I guess the question will be, and I guess we should actually call this something, we should probably call this like G0. And So now let's use G0 as a graph. I mean, we, we actually still have some more crap. Oh, all right. Hello, isoop delineator person thing. Sup? Sup, dude? Uh, not much. I mean, well, I mean, much, but, you know, stupid much. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> By the way, thank you for mentioning that on stream. So, um, on the off chance that people had forgotten that I doxed it, they can now remember and show up at your place, or worse. But, well, welcome to Albuquerque. So are you in our city right now? Uh, come at me. Don't, don't do that. Um, so are you in the city of Albuquerque now? Or have you a lit in our wonderful bag of shit? Oh, no, backpacking some more. Okay, so you are, you've rented it, but you are not quite here yet. Um, I assume, are you going to, you're not going to hike over here, I'm guessing. I assume you're... Oh, oh, but, but, okay, so you, you're already, you are living here, you just left the city briefly. Well, good, hike, we got a lot of good hiking going on. I mean, it's the middle of the night, but, you know. Um, uh, hopefully you're, you're settled down in a tent somewhere uh, that has good Wi-Fi. I guess we can get 4G up in the mountains. Uh, I came back for another load of my crap. Oh, so you're back at, in Carlsbad now. Um... You know, that's a pretty long drive just to be picking up multiple loads of crap. You could, like, get a U-Haul or there's these people called movers. I am renting in the Heights. Cool. And you're currently in Carlsbad. So you're probably really fucking close to me now. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could go look at my old stream and see exactly where you are. Yeah, you are the movers. Yeah, well. But, I mean, not multiple loads seems like a really bad idea from... I mean, if you're moving two blocks, not a big deal. Carlsbad is, like, way the frick down there. I've been there. Um, it's like a five or six hour drive, but that was back when the speed limit was a lot lower. Um, it, you might be able to put it, Leah. Yeah, we totally should. That would be awesome. Uh, welcome to Albuquerque. May God have mercy on your soul. Uh, if anybody else wants to move it to Albuquerque, contact me and I will help you look for an apartment on stream. And when you find one, everyone will know where you, where you fucking live. So that is, uh, that is something to look forward to. Um, yeah, yeah, well, you know, you know, you know, this is, uh, this is clearly something I could have done better on. And by the way, all my streams are preserved on YouTube. So it's not, we're not even going to lose it after two weeks because Twitch only keeps them for two weeks. So, so, you know, that's, that's just, I, I, I'm almost tempted to go in and edit the version on YouTube, um, but I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, you know, people just want to hang out with you. You seem like such a cool guy. You've got Amazon Prime. I don't know if you can, people can, is that Amazon Prime or Twi Twitch Prime, isn't it? You've got Twitch Prime. Um, what happens if you click on that? Ooh. Shiny. Wow. So it is Amazon Prime, plus some Twitch shit. Um, so clearly you're rich enough to afford Amazon Prime, I'm just saying. And not only Amazon Prime, but Twitch Prime, which is like Amazon Prime plus plus. So you're clearly swimming, and you're living in the Heights, which is not a terrible area of town to live in. It's not like the South Valley or... Well, you've been here before, so I mean, you know, for people who are living here in Albuquerque right now and listening to this... He's living in a good place. 
And he's clearly got the, the bucks to get the Amazon Prime and the Twitch Prime. So, um, and, you know, crime rates are high in Albuquerque. So, so I'm telling anybody who's listening out there, you probably want to rob him first before somebody else gets to him. So, just saying, you know, we'll welcome Wagon to town. Welcome to town. We took your stuff. Just saying. Um, well, that's a, that's a pretty darn good strategy if you're moving to the city of Albuquerque. Get rid of all your nice shit so, uh, you know, when you move, people can't steal it from you. Um, the other possibility is just to, um, you know, sell it at a yard sale. You robbed yourself. You, you mugged yourself. You are now mug-proof. You outsmarted them. Unfortunately, I am on Nextdoor, and one of the problems is um, a lot of times they'll break into your car or even your house to look for stuff. Um, I mean, they don't find anything, but they still break, like, your, you know, your vehicle, break into your house. They, they cause damage. So that's, you know, that's sort of the problem. Um, just, just welcome to Albuquerque for that. This is, a, this is a, leave the car door unlocked. Yeah, 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 yeah. And y y you'll see. What, you know, maybe, maybe you'll be lucky and nothing will happen. I mean, um, <laughs> just don't bust my head. <laughs> Dear thief, nothing valuable inside. <laughs> Dear thief, door unlocked. Feel free to look around. Uh, just don't break anything. Yeah. Well, you know, um, the other problem here is, and I'm going to get in trouble for this, but... The, the thieves in Albuquerque are pretty damn stupid, unfortunately. And some of them are illiterate. So th you're, you're running into problems on top of pro problems. Um, here, so you know, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, maybe I'm just warning you ahead of time. I'm actually making more of a prediction when you get robbed, despite the fact that you've taken all the precautions of having, uh, well, yes, this is also true. Um, and so that is, uh, that is, uh, and we're going to skip the Pomodoro because I'm actually talking to someone here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just, uh, we're all, you're all screwed, basically. Welcome to Albuquerque, New Mexico. The city that never sleeps because it's got getting robbed constantly. The city that stays awake for robberies. So good luck with that. Um... And if, you, if your vehicle is worth anything, they'll just steal the car itself. And they will steal some cheap cars. People have had some really crap cars stolen. Um, yes. I... God damn it. I know we met on another stream. Oh, it's a stick shift. Oh, screw it. Then forget it. I wouldn't even rob it. Stick shift. Ugh. Who still drives stick? I don't even know how to drive stick. Well, I do know how, but... Um, manual gear shifting, such a pain. Um, yeah, 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 stand in front of a truck, four on the floor, off-roading, getting up those hills, all this crap that no one ever, well, that no one with a regular car ever does. Uh, otherwise there's no truck, right? <laughs> Keep on trucking! <laughs> <sighs> okay, well, um, what other stream did we run into each other on? We ran into each other, I know we met on a different stream, but then we ran into each other on a different, different stream. Um, so that is, uh, that is, I, I guess we have sort of similar tastes, uh, except for the fact that we like each other, which is kind of weird. But I mean, generally we have the same tastes in the streams that we, we watch for pleasure as opposed to the streams we put on to torture people with. Uh, like this one. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so even while we're talking, people can gaze in wide wonder at this uh, hideous, hideous uh, graph. Well, Miglobite, I thought, was where we met. Did we meet at Miglobite's stream? And by the way, I'm going to spell it correctly because I do want people to go there and, and love her. Not in a creepy way. That's Miglobites there. You can go there. I could go there right now if I wanted to. I'm going to go there right now. Um, I, if she's broadcasting, this is going to be not a great thing, but um, I don't think she is right now, actually. 
Um, oh yeah, Twitter.tv. There we go. Twitch. Losing my freaking mind. So this is Megalobite's lovely stream, which is oh, she's all fine. Um, this is kind of what she looks like. Well, she doesn't actually look this bad. She looks pretty good actually. Uh, here are some videos that you could. She's got eleven of them. Oh, I guess she does expire them after two weeks. Um, spelling is hard. That, that is true. Reading is hard. All the stuff is hard. Um, oh, cool. I didn't know that if you hovered over a stream, you would get, like, little little playback from it. Da, 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 da. I did not know that. I think YouTube... I know YouTube does that. So this is actually a lot much cuter version of her here. Um, unfortunately, she has a terrible... Um, <laughs> unfortunately, she has this terrible face condition that she always has some sort of uh, a disease on her face. Uh, and sometimes she grows a full beard and mustache and sunglasses. It's pretty bad. Um, the rest of the time, she's just really pale and white. So not, not great, but you know. Um, oh, and she decided recently to, to dye her hair pink. Um, and you'll notice here, I never noticed this myself, here she's wearing a pink coverall, and here she's dyed her hair pink, but isn't wearing a coverall. Clearly, clearly terrible things have happened. Uh, oh, yes, that would be awesome. That would be fucking fantastic. Um, Co-stream? Hell yeah. Hell, now you can not watch two people for the price of not watching one person. Unless Megalobite raids us, and then we will have, like, 20 people who are watching us and going, well, crap, this wasn't worth watching. <laughs> so she's a wonderful person. Everyone should go watch her, uh, except she's not on right now. I wonder who is on right now. Now, I, I once did something really terrible where I started, this is just a freaking weird looking, why do you need white on your face to go to, to the sun? Um... Uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. Zero plus zero equals question mark? Um, okay, this is, this is just, we're going, to, we're going to have trouble here very soon. Um, because I, let's see who I know is streaming right now. Maybe I could raid them, because we get to the end of the stream. Um, so let's see, whoa. No, 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 give me, give me, give me more, what the hell? Usually on my other machine, this is going all the way out. So, uh, this guy's good. Elder D. Squirrel is good when he's just chatting. Um, oh, the only way is, is wonderful. I, I am tempted to go and restream her, read cat videos. Cat videos? That sounds like a stupid thing to, to, to raid. Um, plus technically I'm not sure I'm ready to raid yet. Let me see how long I've been on. Um, oh wow, one and a half hours. It's actually pretty, pretty long. Um, I was gonna finish up, um, whatever hideousness. Did I, where I, lo did I lose my hideousness? Uh, here. No, that's not what I wanted. Crap! Have I lost my hideousness? Um... Well, now I might be annoyed if I've lost my really ugly... Oh, here it is. I think. No, no, I think it's the left of this. There we are. I'm gonna pin this. Um... See, that would be, that, that would be really, really funny right here. If I knew what it was in reference to. You have ruined... You have ruined another unsuccessful stream. You have taken something that is bad... And, well, not made it any worse. Can't make it any worse. But it's still pretty damn bad. So now we have both this hideous graph, and we have you, and somewhere we have Twitch TV, which despite the fact that it says sound is on, you can't get sound on this VM. And the only thing that bugs me is I could have sworn that I had this... This was wider. This used to be... Um, this had like a whole... Can I, what happens if I click on this? Nothing. 
This used to be wider so you could see who was streaming, what they were doing and stuff. So let's... Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Um... Hell yeah. I'm not going to full screen this until I find someone that I, um... Uh, no, you don't have to go full screen to do it. No, there, there's a way to do it without going full screen. Because I have that on my other machine. Um, I don't have to go full screen to do that. Plus, if I go full screen on this machine, bad things may happen. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Maybe I have to just make this bigger. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you're right. I think you are actually correct. Um, it's just the size right now that's, that's stopping it. And this VM is a little bit smaller than my actual machine. So it's basically trying to make the space, trying to use the space efficiently. Okay, so who? Um, oh, you're just here because you're on my friends list. Um, Shay Jennings. Well, I must, she's on my friend list. Um, 25 viewers, seven viewers, eight viewers. These should be in order by number. Oh, those are recommended, sorry, sorry. Um, these should be in order by number of viewers. Uh, let's see. She's nice. She's nice. I really want to kind of raid the only way. She's she's really nice and um. Um. I know you're not live. I just noticed it. Um. Now here, this is last time I did this. I was so insulting, I lost friends because because of it. Um, woo! This channel is intended for mature audiences. Woo! What the hell? She's a really nice girl. She doesn't know why she does that. Um, okay. Um, see, that would be funny is if I invited her to come watch my stream. And then she saw herself on my stream. That would freak her out. Um... Uh, let's see. If I asked her to come watch my stream, she could see herself on my stream, with probably about an eight second delay. Um, so, um, yeah, I know that this is actually not a good thing to do. You're not really supposed to be restreaming other streamers, um, with or without sound. Um, I'm going to make the crude comment that most streamers uh, are better without sound. Certainly I am. Um, I'm even better without video. So if you ever want to do that. Oh, thank you for reporting me. That's very, very kind of you. Um, so let's see here. Um, we could try to, try to lip read, um, I guess. It's because, of course, it's because you care. Um, Oh, so I'm so tempted to say that she's going to freak out, though I don't want her to freak out. So I, I think we will stop doing this here. I can watch my own stream on my stream, but that just gives me the infinity effect. Um, oh, I'm seeing it much faster than that from my, my side. Uh, but you're right. I just realized that when, it, when I restream somebody else's stream, uh, just like the rest of my channel, it's going to be at very slow speed. Okay. So I think I'm just going to sneak out of here before... Um, before this turns into a, a freak show. Okay. I am now coming down with my beautiful ellipse picture. Ah, <sighs> ellipses. Okay. I feel better now. Pretty, pretty ellipses. <sighs> yeah, this graph is a freak show. Um, believe it or not, though, um, looking at the graph, it is a terrible graph to look at, but that's actually not my goal. Um, my original goal was to actually just find out, all right, fine, you know, it's, I know what time it is here, it's 9, 12 p.m., both in Albuquerque and in Carlsbad, so it's not that late for you, Mr. Young, hip, going up rich Amazon Prime heights living person um but fine go to bed see if i care oh okay that is that is kind of bad all right get some sleep talk to you later i'm gonna go back to uh making this graph even worse Ooh, you'll be so tired by the time you get here um 
But you know, you're welcome to it. You are welcome. Someone should really do that. And someone should really... Anything you can do to stop me from streaming would, I think, be very deeply appreciated uh, by the people of Albuquerque, by the people who are watching the stream, by the people who are watching the stream recorded, and by me. I am just sick to death of streaming, but I just feel that I have to. Uh, I, I feel compelled. So if you could come and stop me from streaming, I think pretty much everyone in the world would appreciate you. You would become a hero. You could move out of Albuquerque to some place that's not Albuquerque. And so on and so forth. How many people do... I have like one person... And you're the only person I have in chat, right? I mean, it's not like if I did a raid. Oh, well, okay. Four people, but I think... I think most of them are fake. Well, not you. I mean, maybe you are fake. I don't know. But I think most of the other ones are fake. Um, so now... Well, crap. Now I kind of actually want to... Um, to raid the only way, uh, only because people get so excited when you do it, even when it's like, so-and-so is raiding with zero users. Everyone's, oh, thank you, you're so kind, blah, 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 blah. It's like, it, you didn't bring anything to the table, and, you know, just an empty freaking, basically all you did is interrupt the stream at that point, because you didn't bring anybody. You just brought up like a little pop-up saying, hey, this guy wants to be famous. In fact, I might start doing strategic um, zero person raids just to become famous and just see what happens what happens when people are like oh you're so kind you're so kind for, for raiding me la 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 and then go back start the stream again raid somebody else keep doing that and just 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 freak the fuck out of people because um, I don't think it tells people when you stop hosting their channel I think that's that's a um that's a weirdness. Okay, I think I'm hoping you've gone by now, because I mean, I will babble on for hours. Um, so I guess I'll finish my sentence about this graph, even though you're not here anymore. This graph is not for looking at; it's more to find out uh, what quantities can be determined from what other quantities. Um, and it is actually of some degree of interest, not for ellipses necessarily, but like when you have astronomical phenomena. Uh, you know, what information do you need to know what time the sunset is, or blah, 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 blah. Okay. I think I've babbled enough now. Um, and have I actually... Okay, let me take a quick look to see how much time I have burned doing nothing. Only one hour and 45 minutes. I'm gonna, I want to finish up the, um, I want to finish up the rest of these, uh, these ellipse relations uh, in terms of what they tell us and how we could break up, we can build up this graph here. Um, all right, so the next thing we have here is area POC equals x times y over 2. Again, this is very clearly rest determine 1 um, area POC, x and y. And again, it doesn't matter what order I put them in because it will get sorted. And S5, okay, this is probably g gonna give us some new variables here. Oh, actually, hang on. Um, area POC is a new variable. S5 is going to be, um, so area pink, so this is actually interesting. Area pink, now this one I don't think we can solve for all the variables here. This one we're a bit more limited to. I mean, there probably is a solution, but for this one we kind of want to look for um, we want to look for closed form solutions because the idea is we're going to be composing functions to get stuff, and we can't compose a, a non uh, function that doesn't have a closed form. So this one I think we actually do need to go back over here and and take a look at this one because this is pretty 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 ugly. I turned into a Larry David. Um, so equation equals. Do we need? I think I can get. No, let me just do this. Let me just be careful here. Alrighty. So let's just see what. E make sure you understand what equation is. Okay. Good. I didn't really ask you to create a second thing there. That's fine. Okay. So now, can we solve? E well, we don't. We can obviously solve for area pink. That's not. An, that's not an issue. 
Can we solve it for A? And I don't think we can. Yep, didn't think you could do that. Can we solve this equation for B? We can, I'll be damned. So, okay. So let's see what this, so this one we actually have to maybe give um, directly. Um, so this says that if we have, um, A area pink and X. Those are the very let's see. A B X and area pink. So I'm just gonna put this here. Um I think these are the four variables, right? Are they? They must they must be, right? A B X and area pink. So we can get to B from any from those other three. Um, a X area pink, and this is where it gets ugly. I think I have to do I have to do my sorts manually now because um, I, I'm not using one of those functions to do it. Uh, so that will give you B. And when I say B, do I mean B? Um, or do I mean, okay, hang on now, I think I'm okay with this, although now I need to make sure that B and the set containing B are two different things, but anyway, okay, so if we have uh, the other three variables, we can get B, we cannot get A, can we get we can obviously get area pink, so I need, guess we need to put that down. Um, sort A, B, X, which is already sorted actually, area pink. But I mean, that's sort of the definition there, but we still need to include it. All right, can we get um, Pomodoro back, oh, let's see, I'm gonna skip this Pomodoro, but I'm gonna go with the next one if, we, if I'm still around. Um, All right, so we can't solve for A. Just double check that. Yeah, we're not going to get that. Okay, we can solve for area pink. We can solve for B, and I guess the only thing uh, remaining to solve for is um, X. And I don't think we'll be able to solve for X either. Yeah, that's it's sort of buried in too deep into this equation to get it out. All right, so this is the two things we can solve for. Um, And we are keeping up with our variables. Uh, hang on, are we? No, we're not. Area pink. Okay. And the next one, I think there's nine of these total if anyone's getting tired of them. Um, so this, from this one, we can clearly get any of the others from this one. Rest determine one. Area from center. Area POC. Area pink. By the way, area pink should probably, or actually, I think it's going to be area purple, um, should actually say focal er area from focus, because that is actually an important quantity there. And what have we added to our list of variables here? Area pink. Uh, we already have area P. So this is area from center. Nice. And then I might as well throw in the eccentricity, because I know we're going to get there in just a sec. Um, and I'm pretty sure from there you can get the eccentricity. Um, in fact, I know for a fact because I've done the equations. From the eccentricity, um, at any two of those, you can get the third one. So we can say that is going to be S7. Rest determine 1 for A, B, eccentricity. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, this is our magic variable T here. And this one's sort of interesting because it also, if you had Y and B, you could get to T. But I don't explicitly state that. That is one of the things we're hoping will come out of this hideous graph is that if you had Y and B, you could get to T because you could get to X and A. I mean, there, through a lot of gyrations, you could eventually get to T. 
is the hope. Uh, that this will tell us that this is true. Okay, so t is another variable that we didn't have before. And again, it's fairly obvious that we can get any of these from the others. Whoa. My virtual keyboard is being weird. My real keyboard is fine, but translating it to the VM is being a little bit weird today. All right, so this is just uh, AXT. It'll clear out the sorting by itself. Okay. And then uh, we have a new variable. Now that I think about it, we could, in theory, extract the variable names from the, the SI, but whatever. Okay. So this says area FOP, Y and F, very clearly can be determined from each other. We will add area FOP here. Uh, and I think the purple triangle is actually the focal area. Um, and I don't think I say that it is, which kind of bugs me. Uh, yeah, area purple. So S10 equals rest determine 1. This is going to look hideous. But again, we're not necessarily looking for um, for the uh, picture of the graph. We, we just want the... Uh, we just want to know what's reachable from what. So area purple is the latest of the um, of the lovely thing. I think that's the last one. Um, I'm probably wrong, but let's. I think we're getting very close to the end now. Um, nope, there's one more. And again, let's see. S Y over F minus X. Yeah, again, it's fairly obvious we could get. Well, let's see. Angle FP we can get, yeah, we can get any of those from the others. Um, let's determine one of ang OFP, Y, F, and X. And I think ang OFP is one of our new variables. And we don't have a variable called uh, OPP, but if you, we did, we could get down with OPP. And ang AFP, and again, um, well, this one's actually just two variables, but I mean that, that's still possible. So we can say from S12, you can rest determine one. Um, ang AFP and ang OFP can determine each other, which is not very surprising. Um, and then we can make this go from one zero to twelve, and then. All right, let's boogie. This is going to be interesting. All righty. Oh, actually, I guess we got rid of everything else, which is fine. All right, so we'll start off with the two formulas that for some reason always cause a problem. The definitions of our lovely... Um, our lovely ways of creating subsets. Yep, for some reason they always want to be treated as two separate things. You're the same man, you're twins. Come play with us. Forever and ever. Okay. So, whoa, geez. Losing something on the keyboard there. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and cut in the, uh, the 12 conditions that we know. And... May God have mercy on our souls. And I need to put a semicolon there. Now, may God have mercy on our souls. And it's quite possible we're going to run out of computation time because this is a fairly ugly looking thing. Shift enter. Oh! Recursion depth of 1,024 reached in evaluation of T. So clearly something terrible has happened here. Um, um, wow. So T is of the problem child here, and I think it, 
I mean, this T should be protected from the other T um, because these are, oh, let's see, no? SO equals, this is not difficult. Um, it's hideous, but it's not difficult. Um, all right, well, let's just, let's just take a look at SO real quick before we do, um, let's just look at SO, oh, let's see what the hell's going on there. Um, wow. So why is this being weird? Is this because I have a T and a T that are not being... Yeah, this might be because this T and this T... They really shouldn't, though. I mean, that is... That is... That's a local variable. Um... Hmm. We're just using t as a dummy variable here, though. I'm going to change this to u, and if that works, I'm going to be very upset, because this should not happen. So I'm going to say sort u. This will become a u. And this will become a u. And this will become a u. But, I mean, really, I shouldn't have to do that, because the t in here is different from the t inside my variable list. That's a, that's a very basic principle there. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Not cool. It's a dodecahedron, by the way, if, if anyone's wondering. I'm also missing a semicolon somewhere. And it is after S5. Let me add that. Um... And I will go ahead and put um, a note here that, um, so let's see, if is this, so I'll put a to-do here, um, why can't I use t inside direct s, and it might be because it's a, it's a delayed, it's not a function definition, and it might be that I actually need to use a word module here and make t a private variable. Um, uh, and in set S. Uh, so it might be that because I'm not using a private variable here, that's why it's being kind of weird. Um, but still, this is very ugly uh, behavior. Okay. So now that we've made that fix and the S5 fix, let's, um, let's go crazy. Let's go ahead and do it for the whole set. This is a nightmare waiting to happen. Oh! Yo mama! No, it hasn't. One more time. Wow. Oh, but this time it reached the memory limit. And nice. Um... Okay, cool. Um, wonder what how, wonder how big set is at this point. Um, how many different dependencies are we claiming here? I keep forgetting that is not the comment structure. Fucker. 245,797. That is, I am, that is a hell of a number of edges to draw. So maybe we will drop S0 from this computation. What happens if we ignore the sort of hideous, uh, obvious things going on here? 36. Okay. 
that's just fucking weird. So, 36. If we don't include the obvious, um, the obvious include the obvious implications because of set inclusion, this looks really nice. I mean, this is whoa. Okay, so the only problem we have here, this is gorgeous. Um, and and my I, I was worried that like B would be considered a separate set than A comma B then B by itself, but I, I think we're okay here, actually. Um, so now the question is, there's not more than one A, is there? There's an A here, A, B here, which is fine. Um, no, I think this is actually bizarrely correct. I don't know how helpful it is, but... Um, so it's from B in the eccentricity, you can get to A. Um, from B and F, you can get to A. And from T and X, you can get to A. That is maybe a surprise for me there. Um, there's a bunch of ways to get to Y, and a bunch of ways to get to X. Okay. So the temptation here is now to say that instead of trying to do this for all of these 10 billion different angles, um, we just do it sort of, oh shit, we can do it piecemeal for, um, you know, these as they, as we go along with them. Um, and we will never have to deal with this whole sort of ugliness, but at the same time we will get Ah, man. That is really hideous how bad this is. Um, I mean, I could obviously calculate it on Mathematica separately, but let's see here. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do here, and I'm not happy about this, is I'm just going to create the ones, the direct ones for the uh, for the variables we're sort of actually using together. In other words, R1 is going to equal direct of f x a y. Uh, R2 is going to be direct of a b f. R3. And by the way, yes, if we wanted to, we could make these different sets and then just rest, determine one, and directify them at the same time. Um, R4 equals... Wait. Oh, this is area, not angle. Okay. I'm tempted just to do with this, see what happens. So here we're going to have, um, let's see, set 2 equals flatten table ri, table blah blah blah, ri, where i goes from 1, because we're not actually doing an r0, to right now we're going to say 4, And then we're going to say final equals flatten set set two. And then we're going to graph the final. Hopefully that's going to be less obnoxious than what we have now. Um, certainly the S0 is just killing us. We just, we just can't keep doing that. Um, This is not the greatest interface here. So let's go ahead and kill everything from S0 downwards. And let's go ahead and paste this other thing in. We can get rid of this real quickly. Now this is not complete. This is basically um, just we've done four of them as an example to see how this is going to look. 
Oh, we can't find them, but if we, you know, we've done it, so it's good enough. Alrighty, so we have these two formulas still here. So what we want to do is this, basically. Da, 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 da. Escape W, Control V, and I get the feeling this is going to be a very small, um, a very small graph. I mean, I'm hoping it is, because that's... Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. And that is because... I don't think I've even defined S... Um, zero, have I? It might be defined from previously. We're going to say S goes from 1 to 12. And that should be a much... So there we go. Yeah, still not super good looking, but... But... Um, much better looking than when we try to get all of them in there. Okay. Still pretty ugly. Um, so, A eccentricity to be B eccentricity. Okay. I think I am done to death with this. Um, and honestly, I don't think I want to raid uh, the only way because I just would be pointless, really. All right. Um, thank you for watching the stream. I think what we're doing here, I think, has some degree of promise um, in terms of saying, you know, what, what information about an ellipse um, given what information about an ellipse, what other information can we determine? Uh, in other words, what are the possible formulas that would give us, for example, uh, F? So we would want to look sort of at um, F and see everything that... Why is there only one thing that... A and X is the only thing that does it? Well, clearly we haven't finished doing all of this. And we also then need to do our union stuff, which is... Um, which might be a nightmare, which might actually add more to this than, um, than, is, um, than is useful. It might become totally useless. Um, but again, this is a very similar problem to the one I'm trying to do here, which I have not really gotten an <laughs> answer to yet. Not even an upvote, wow. Um, and the, the answer, the question is basically, if we have all these formulas that can give, you know, go from X to Y to Y to Z to, then you can go to X to Z, you can blah, 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 blah. Um, and maybe that is just the transitive closure, but there's more to it than that, because you can solve a lot of these um, inequalities for more than one variable. Uh, and that is the sort of... Um, th there's something here, I think, that's deeper than just, you know, chasing mathematical formulas... The idea is, uh, you know, you can create a bunch of formulas here that will be useful just from some very basic information. Thank you for watching the stream, and I will probably not be back tonight, and I might be back tomorrow.